Hey everybody. All right, let's talk about it. Uh, I brought this movie. Yeah, I'm bad at this. This is the first episode. This is going to be poorly executed. Anyways, I bought I brought this notebook in with me to watch it because I wanted to take notes throughout the movie. Um, I have theater experience up here. I don't know if my camera is autofocusing. I'll find out after I'm done recording this. Showing up is the hardest part, so I'm just gonna let what happens happen for this one. Um, theater experience up here. Got a list of the trailers that I saw. Um, I have strong shots, lame trash, and because this was a horror movie, I have a jump scare counter. Uh, I couldn't see very well in the theater, so what I would do is just uncap my pen, make a tally somewhere, and, um, you know, count them up after I was walking out. And I'm gonna count them up again in this review, um, just to illustrate how, how reliant on the movie this was of jump scares. Was that structure? Yeah had a couple drinks. Anyways, <clears throat> let's get into it. So, preface, I have not read the book. I watched the TV movie about two weeks ago with my friend who was also in the theater with me when um, we watched the new one. And eternally grateful for him being the one to make me watch the original because A, I would never have watched it without him, and B, he's read the book a few times and is very into literature, so he was able to interpret some things and even get some feedback from me on what I was noticing that he had never picked up on before, so that made the whole thing much more interesting. And we both came out of the theater with the opinion of, spoiler, this movie is not very good. Okay, so... Theater experience, first of all, because that matters a lot. How I was feeling in the theater dictates how I would feel about the movie at least a little bit. So, uh, in our theater, there was literally a cricket just chirping away the entire time. Uh, t we got there like 20 minutes before. Um, there was many repeated ads over and over. Uh, let's see the trailers. This is a horror movie, so naturally almost all of the trailers were for horror movies. Leatherface looked lame. Jigsaw doing that thing where, okay, you've had too many things in this franchise, you need to reboot it with just an unnumbered sequel. Uh, Happy Death Day. That looked fucking cool, in my opinion, because I love Grand uh, Groundhog Day, and I just watched Edge of Tomorrow recently, and that movie was cool, and every time there's a Groundhog Day loop, I love that shit. Killer Queens bite the dust, that's the best part of Killer Queen. Um, so Happy Death Day looked really cool. Boo 2 a Medea Halloween, again. Fuck. Okay, and then Friend Request. I'm friends with the goat. Yeah, this shit was retarded. Okay, on to the actual movie, and we're only five minutes in. Not even. Four minutes. Awesome. Okay, so I'll start with the strong shots, because why would you keep watching if I'm just going to bitch about it? Strong shots. The logo included the balloon. That was kind of neat. Um, I'm a sucker for fucking shallow focus and just pulling focus, because I have wide lenses. I know how hard focus pulling is. So, the notebook focus pulling at the very beginning of the movie, that was really cool. Um, next strong shot. These are in chronological order as they show up in the movie, by the way. Um, the implied two white dots in the basement where Georgie goes down and he sees what I wrote as Pennywise, spelled Penny W-E-Y-E-S. Because I'm a Fuck face. Um, that was really cool. 
Uh, the next one, when Mike is being scolded by his grandfather, and he's like, you can either be one of us out here or one of them in there. And then the, the, uh, the scene transitions from sheep being herded through the hallway thing to match cut. The kids are coming out of the classroom and they're being herded in the exact same way. Um, it was a cool match cut, but thematically it doesn't really make any sense because the sheep... Obviously, they're sheep. They're being led into the slaughter. Whereas, the specific Lucky Seven that are coming out of the classroom, and it's not all Lucky Seven, but they're coming out of the classroom, these are the ones who are not the sheep. These are the ones who are going to defeat Pennywise and break the cycle. Um, so, it was a cool match cut, but it wasn't good. Story-wise, anyways. Um, then we come to Ben and Beverly meeting, and you get that really sick, like, ridiculously wide aperture, sharp focus on the faces, but just absolutely blown out of focus background on both uh, Beverly and Ben. That's solid visual storytelling. Um, it's the same thing, like, I feel about Adventure Time, where um, James like when he's just staring at um, Emily in the car and she's the only thing in focus and you get that nice bokeh of the lights that they're passing in the background. She's the only thing in focus because why the hell would anything else come into account? So that's really good. Um, and then the only other shot that I actually wrote down was when Beverly jumps off the cliff and dives into the water and all the boys are watching. That was just a cool shot. Um, and then there's one other shot that I forgot to write down, which was um, when they introduce Stanley and he's sitting in the synagogue or whatever, and he's struggling to do his studies, whatever, for his bar mitzvah. And he's framed in a way where he has the bars of like the railing in front of him so he's imprisoned by his own beliefs like he's he doesn't give a shit about this he's just doing it because his father's making him do it solid visual storytelling there <clears throat> on to the lame shit and there's more lame shit um this is both story and shots wise uh first of all they changed the years the original one was set in 1950 something and they changed it so it was like 1988 or 89 which means the sequel will be in modern day where people will have smartphones and that's oh boy I can't wait to see that garbage uh, or they justify they somehow justify them not having cell phone like what the fuck are they gonna do um, that was kind of stupid Let's see, I wrote down Ben Balloon, and I don't remember what that was. Oh man, this next one. Ben Ragdoll. At one point when Ben is, like, escaping from Henry Bowers and his crew, after he gets his H carved into his chest, which is book accurate and neato that they would do that, because they didn't do it in the original. Um, at in one of the shots, at least, when he's falling down the cliff and rolling, it just looked like there was. They just tossed a rag doll off the cliff and they filmed that. I don't know if that's what they actually did, but that's what it looked like. Uh, next in the lame shit, we just have Richie, period. I, I don't like Richie. Um, Finn, whatever the hell his name is. The guy from Stranger Things that everyone is like, hey, he's such a good comedian. He, I like him a lot. He's doing such good... No. Shut up. I get that that's Richie's character, but goddamn, shut the fuck up, dude. You're so annoying. Um... Oh, man. This is another thing that everyone is giving praise is the Georgie that shows up in the basement that's actually Pennywise. Like... Where he's like, you'll float too, you'll float too, you'll float too. I was, I was getting so tired of it. 
I just kind of don't like... Like, the whole thing with Georgie is that Bill is in denial about his death for the movie, and I don't think that really was the case in the TV movie, and I don't know if that was the case in the book, but it was like very plainly obvious that Georgie was dead and they kept seeming to try to spin it as this weird twist because like in the finale George oh by the way if I didn't make it obvious enough by now this is spoilers as fuck um so like in the finale Georgie shows up again minus his arm as if like somehow Pennywise was just keeping him alive throughout the whole movie um, just to fuck with Bill and it's played as if it was supposed to be some twist that Georgie was dead the whole time like no fucking shit he was dead the whole time he got his goddamn arm ripped off like here with no medical attention and going into a goddamn sewer if you don't bleed out you're gonna die of infection so, yeah. Oh my god. Okay, the next two are the ones that I'm gonna go into a little bit of depth and be a bit of a fucking nerd about cameras and shit. So, the next one I have listed is just the word iron. Uh, this one has... This one has to do with the scene where Beverly finally fights back against her dad, which... In this scene, it's confirmed that her dad was just going to straight up rape her. That's what was going to happen had she not fought back. So, at the beginning of this scene, Beverly is walking to the door. She finds the lock on the door. As she finds the lock, let's say... I don't know exactly how this is showing up on camera. Let's say the lock is here in the frame. For some reason, an iron that's turned on is kept right here in the frame. And as the camera goes over to her dad, kind of, like, I, I very vividly remember the iron staying in frame for at least two shots in a row. So, I was led to believe by the visuals that somebody was going to use that iron against the other one. And then nothing happened with it. Like, I, it's not a major story detail, but you bothered to visually include that. So, that just kind of bugged me. It, like, it's, it was right on the fucking rule of thirds line. And if you don't know what the rule of thirds line is, it's like these parts of the frame where you're going to be driven to look at these parts of the frame just because that's how eyes work somehow. So, they put it in a place where you're gonna look. You're gonna notice it. So why keep it there if you're not gonna use it? Um, so we have that. Oh, and then this last lame shit thing that I wrote down. It's not the last lame shit thing. Um, is when they're all going down the well. Which, by the way, was in the wrong place. It doesn't make any sense as a change. Um, they're all going down the well. Mike is left up top for reasons, even though he's the one with the weapons and is therefore, you know, within reason, one of the first people that should go down because he's going to confirm ability to kill Pennywise. Anyways, Mike's up at the top. Bowers comes out of nowhere and he hits Mike in the back of the head with a baseball bat. There is a reason that rabbit punches are banned in, like, competitive combat sports. Hitting somebody in the back of the head is a good way to kill someone. If not, just give them very serious brain damage very fast. So, Bowers hits him in the back of the head with a baseball bat. At very least, he should be knocked the fuck out for multiple minutes. And realistically he would be dead from that kind of hit like Bowers is going in there to kill them all he's not going in there to fuck with them and make them weaker for Pennywise Pennywise told them kill them all and he's listening to them at this point 
So, there is no reason that Mike should survive this hit, let alone get up like nothing really happened, and just rub the back of his head, and then throw Henry Bowers down the well. Which, by the way, they kind of just seem to imply that Henry Bowers died by getting thrown down the well. Like, let's just pretend that Bowers is alive all the way down the well. He, like, ricochets off of both sides like a pinball, and then say he's knocked out. Not dead, but just knocked out when he gets to the bottom of the well. Wells tend to have water at the bottom of them. Bottom of them. That's what wells are for. So, say there's one inch of water at the bottom of this well. Bowers is going to drown at the bottom of the well at best. Unless he landed face up in an inch of water. And even then, he's hitting the back of his head. Again! Back of the head! Serious problem. So that bothered the fuck out of me. And then the last thing that I did not write down in the lame shit is basically just the entire finale. You get Pennywise the Dancing Clown, and he's actually dancing, and the camera is stabilized to his face. Like, they just realized that the warp stabilize effect exists in Adobe Premiere, and they just tracked both eyes and the mouth, and they were like, keep the camera focused on that and let everything else be weird and that's it, it'll be unsettling it, oh that was mm, strange <sighs> so pennywise was doing that while he had beverly like catatonic and floating in the air which didn't happen in either the tv movie or the book um, and he did this because she was strong enough that he knew he couldn't eat her because she didn't fear him, which reduces her role from being the one who was supposed to actually damage him in the first place to she's Princess Peach. All the other boys are now Mario and they just have to save her. That's the only reason that they get back together after falling out in Act 2 they just want to save the princess. That's really boring. So then they all go back down and they fight Pennywise and they start winning. And then um, like each bit of damage that they did to Pennywise was actual physical damage that they put effort into doing. Um, and then Bill uses the cattle pistol that was foreshadowed from like the very beginning of the movie and Mike is like it's not loaded and then Bill fires it a second time while it's unloaded and I I guess I missed the part where it was supposed to be the power of belief because up until this point everything was physical real damage but um Honestly, when Pennywise started to disintegrate from his head, I genuinely thought he was fucking with them by acting like he was damaged, but he wasn't. Um, but I guess it turns out he actually was damaged. So, he gets damaged, they all start wailing on him, uh, you get Pennywise changing into all different things to fuck with each kid as he comes, and then someone else helps that kid out. And it was dragged out so long that I was like, wait a minute. Are you actually gonna just kill Pennywise right now? Like, are you going to just eliminate the part where you do the, the uh, adults? Because I would be happy to see that. That would be a cool change. But no. They, uh, they all just, they kind of debilitate him. And then when he's like, you know, taken aback, like, oh shit, I can't do anything, and he's like falling apart, they just stop. Like, in, in the TV movie, when they confront the spider, they're just whooping that ass. Like, they're getting up in there, and then they're just fucking him up. But as these kids, they just stop. They have mook chivalry. Like... 
they realize, oh, we can all attack, so let's none of us attack. So, that bothered me. They should have killed him, and they didn't. <sighs> okay, and then, you know, just to top this off, we have the jump scare counter that I had. So let's count these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 27. I'm counting this as five. This is the scene, going back a bit, where um, the Lucky Seven are in the garage, and Pennywise takes over the projector that they were using, and he's like... Oh, by the way, I defined jump scare as any time the audio goes from reasonably uh, reasonable volume to way too loud in like that amount of time so um, in the garage scene what they did was they had Pennywise come out as a giant and it was loud black screen loud black screen loud black screen loud black screen loud one more black screen like and I it was so quick that I had to actually give a full five tally for that. Um, and then there's two others that I'll point out, which are both the walkie-talkie. One is at the very beginning of the movie, where Georgie goes down to the basement, and Bill's trying to communicate with him in the walkie-talkie, and it's just way too loud. This seems to be varying from theater to theater when I looked online to see what people said. Some people complained about the Georgie walkie-talkie jump scare, some people did not. Camera died. So this happens again when Bill is walking down the stairs, following those bloody footsteps, and he goes into the basement, or into the kitchen, rather, and you see the silhouette of Georgie go across the screen, and you hear that loud fucking walkie-talkie sound again. And... I don't know. Not a single one of these jump scares is actually scary, by the way. That's why I said I define jump scare as when it used a really fucking loud sound. Not when something actually made me jump. I did not jump like 28 times in this movie. That didn't happen. <sighs> so they all beat Pennywise. There's no sewer gangbang. Oh, by the way, Beverly is like uncomfortably attractive. Do with that information what you will, but oh my god. They gave her some serious, interesting camera focus. Um, so, like, they don't do the thing that nobody expected them to do, because that would be very illegal to film. Um, and then... Uh, roll credits and then you get chapter one and then I didn't stay for the uh, after credit screen because I was with a friend who was also not interested in watching any sort of shit like that and we just wanted to get out of the theater because it was bad I hope you enjoyed it and if you want more like this comment on it why would you watch me review a movie I'll see you all the next time I go see a movie. I got a movie pass card, so that means I can go see whatever. So if you want me to go watch something, fucking tell me. Anyways, I'll see you all next time. Peace.